Welcome to the Fly Fish Food Shop Talk Podcast. Episode number 2017. Yeah. <laughs> we could be like quarterbacks at the line of scrimmage. Yep. Call the audible. 319. And we'd like to welcome back Mr. Lance Egan. Lance He's been was on a hiatus. Yeah. Self-imposed. Self-imposed hiatus. Hiatus. I'm back. You were fishing and stuff. And stuff. Well, we're kind of getting back on the horse. Yeah. The bandwagon. So, the podcast. We have we have a cool topic today. It seems like uh, this this works great. As as a lot of you know, this is just upstairs from our shop, so we all work downstairs quite a bit, um, and we hear the topics of the day every day. And so we've chosen to uh, chat about uh, one of the things we are hearing about a lot. It's fall, and it's the spawn, right? So this is how it usually happens. Someone comes up, you guys know for German Brown are running up on Provo? Nope, they don't have nope. any legs. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, what color egg are they eating today? Anyway, so anyway, yeah, we're, we're the, the fish are spawning. And it's no secret that, you know, there are reds all throughout the river. They're very vulnerable, very easy to catch this time of year. And a lot of people do it. The other thing the state of Utah doesn't close down any sections of the river for the spawn. At least not for I mean, brown trout, for right? For brown trout, yeah. yeah. So why is that? Why do they do that? For browns. For browns. Not cutthroats. Well, browns are non-native. Yeah. Uh, so they're wild here. They've been stocked and introduced at one point, but most of our fisheries, they stock a few of our rivers, but most of our moving waters are wild fish at this point, right? Uh, why don't they do it? I think because the Browns tend to do incredibly well in Utah. Mm -hmm. They tend to have really good, maybe too good in many rivers, too good a reproduction. Yeah. So the recruitment is high and, um, there's no reason to close them from a, you know, fishery standpoint, as far as trying to preserve enough spawning to have a, a successful year right. class. How many thousand trout per mile do we have on the Provo river? I think it's around 3,000. 3,000, yeah. so lots That's and lots lot of fish. fish. Yeah. For a small river, right? Yeah. Lots of fish. Yeah. So we're going to kind of tackle this from both sides of it. Like uh, there are lots of people who say, no, just shut it down. You shouldn't fish it all during this period of time, which we don't necessarily agree with. I mean, you got to be picky about how you fish. And then uh, the, the other side of it is like there are a lot of people that just absolutely go and hunt those reds and rip fish off them, and that's just kind of part of their Thanksgiving tradition here in Utah. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about that a little bit. But the first thing, I think the biggest, um, in my opinion, you guys correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think that egg fishing egg patterns can be very controversial, controversial regardless of whether or not it's during the spawn. But, uh, you know, some anglers say, no, don't ever fish eggs. Some people say fish them. Some mm -hmm. people say fish them the right way. So what do we think about that? I think eggs are something that trout eat and we imitate things trout eat. Um, you know, as, as we're going to talk throughout this, I don't think any of us would advocate picking a fish right off of a spawning bed. But if you're fishing to fish in a pool downstream of a spawning bed, the fish that aren't spawning are eating eggs. So if you want to catch numbers of them, an egg is a very effective way to do it. To every angler, you know, each their own sort of a thing, they get to decide. You get to decide whether you want to fish or an egg or not. But yeah. to me, it's fish food, it's what they eat. Uh, it's a very effective fly of choice this time of year. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, uh, it, it's just knowing when and where to fish those eggs. I mean, you're not going to drop it in right on top of a fish that you can actively, you can see is actively spawning. I mean, really bad for, for that fish and, and the ecosystem at that point, but yeah, fish eggs all you want. You know, we, we've been doing a few videos with some jig style eggs, good for Euro nymphing and yeah. Or, mm -hmm. you know, patterns that have eggs in them, like egg sucking leeches. And yeah. I think it's that uh, if, if people are going to think that you can't fish a certain pattern, like a worm pattern, which worm annelids or even like to go to the other side of the extreme, you know, midge larva, it's a worm looking thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you not going to fish that because it's got some weird connotation with it? Even right. though trout feed heavily on annelids, certain or, yeah, yeah, yeah certain, at certain times, times they go crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, 
But at the same time, I'm not going to fish a big gigantic hook on it that I have a worm pattern with a big barb right? Um, and rip it across. I'm not talking spawning time, just whenever, mm -hmm. you know, there's certain ethics when it comes to fishing. If mm -hmm. you're really concerned about the ethics, then don't fish. I mean, that's the safest. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, we're, we're just out there, you know, with our fully developed human brains, literally torturing fish, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like they, 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 they don't like mouth. any part of the fishing <laughs> side of it. Guess they, what? He did not enjoy that. Exactly. And fish hate Lance more than any other <laughs> angler as well for this reason. Um, yeah, you hear things sometimes like, uh, I don't want fish and egg because it's not, I like to fish things that are imitative, that fish feed on, that hatch into winged adults. And I go, well, that's cool. If that's your criteria, again, everybody gets to decide for themselves, right? But if that's your criteria, you can't fish worms, you can't fish scuds, you can't fish sow bugs, you can't fish crayfish. Uh, and what about so, copper johns, red copper johns? <laughs> well, those hatch into uh, red dragonflies, so red I think you're okay. Dragonfly. Uh, but I, you know, some of those things crack me up sometimes. And again, everybody gets to decide for themselves, but uh, I always, I tease people sometimes about the egg thing. They'll say, Oh, I don't fish eggs. I'm like, Oh, you like streamer fishing? Oh, I love streamer fishing. Like, oh, so you'll, you won't fish the, the newborn, but you'll fish a toddler. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's all, it's different for everybody, but you know, there's all kinds of fun jokes you could have at people's expense with that's fishing the eggs. That's a, that's a good yeah, but I mean, the egg thing for sure, you got to be careful because fish will sometimes feed recklessly on eggs, right? So we, yeah. you got to use a little caution. Like Curtis was saying, you know, don't use hooks with huge gaps. Uh, barbless is always friendly because they come out easier. Uh, you know, I mean, there's things you can do to negate too many of the negative impacts of fishing an egg, I think, and, and still do it fairly responsibly. Yeah. Personally, I don't fish them that much. I will never say I don't fish them because I have in the past a lot and I will con I always have some in my box, but for me personally, these days, they're more of a last resort. You know, if mm -hmm. the fish, there's some days that's just absolutely what the fish want, right? That's yeah, what's in absolutely. the, that's what's in the drift and that's what you got to feed them. Most of the time, I think you can find other things they'll eat. It's funny because I, I have a buddy that uh, was super anti-egg. No, no, I don't, I don't fish eggs. He's like, but I got a fly that kills in, in November. So oh, that's cool. What is it? It's a pink hare's ear. He's like, okay, yeah, because those fish are, are looking at yeah. that pink blob Orange going down. Orange scud. Say, no, nope, that's, uh, that's a mayfly coming down. It's just... <laughs> pink somehow size 18 orange scud tied yeah. really round looks yeah, yeah. really exactly. really very effective funny thing lance you'll not you won't remember this but i remember going into fish tech long long time ago right and i was a new tire and you were in the back tying up a bunch of egg patterns mm -hmm. and i was just joking around like oh lance i see you're just fishing eggs all the time mm -hmm. and you kind of looked up at me like the fly shop employee that's been having to explain this egg thing i'm like no 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 i'm just joking i'm like i fish them too but it was just like, I could tell, you know, having to explain that over and over again at the shop, it's like, you know, eggs are fine. You know, mm -hmm. you just need to know how to use them. You right. Know? I, I think that's funny. Do you remember that? I don't. You no. Think, yeah, he doesn't remember. <laughs> no, but I had lots of interesting interactions with people when I was back in the back tying flies, right? Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. So if, if it's, uh, you say you got a river with a bunch of reds on it, fish actively fish. Uh, spawning on the reds what what's the best way to tackle that that type of circumstance if you still want to fish but you don't want to mess with the spawners i think just fishing the pools fishing i mean reds if you're not sure what a red looks like just give it a quick google search you'll find pictures and videos on youtube there's all kinds of good content out there now showing you what a red looks like so they're pretty easy to avoid and you can basically fish anywhere but on the red yeah um, Generally, when fish are spawning, the brown trout in particular, because they're fall spawners, it's usually a cold water time of year. So there aren't as many fish in riffles. There can be some, but really fast water, really shallow water, there is probably limited mostly to spawning fish versus the slower pools, pockets, edges, eddies would all be pretty safe bets this time of year. Right. Yeah. And, and another reason why, I mean, besides crunching eggs and, you know, another reason to stay away from fishing those areas is um, often the fish will try to stop the eggs from drifting away. And so they'll roll over on, you know, I've seen them do that. Mm. And so you end up snagging them. Mm. So, and not only that, if you're fishing consistently in a, well, the reds are usually a, a uniform water speed and depth. Mm-hmm. 
um, and you're seeing all these fish there, you're a lot more likely to foul hook totally. a fish, even if you're not meaning to. Sure. It's yeah. a lot more likely. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons when you start to kind of add them up why you want to stay away from yeah. an active red. If you've never seen a spawning bed before and you walk up to a river, and keep in mind, we're talking about the brown trout spawn right now, but this is true when rainbows are spawning, when cutthroat are spawning, when brookies are spawning, and on and on. Uh, but you could roll up to the river if you've never seen one before, and all of a sudden you get to a spot in the river that is quite shallow, and the bottom of the river is kind of cleaned off of the moss and debris that would be on the bottom, and you see more large trout in skinnier water than you've ever seen before, you just found yourself a red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty obvious. Right. If it seems like they shouldn't, you know, fish that are oversized, all adult fish are all stacked together in one place, you can, you can probably relate to the fact that you've never seen this before during January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, and all of a sudden in October, Boom. November, December, <laughs> yeah. there they are. That's yeah, what they're doing. There you go. Spawn and you, time. you brought up a good point. Like the browns will spawn sometime between October and December, depending on where you are in the country. But then we have rainbows and cutthroat that are in the springtime. Mm -hmm. You know, and the state of Utah does a really good job of protecting the cuts. A lot of the streams are closed down. Um, but, you know, you're, you're going to be dealing with similar circumstances in the spring, you know, right. where, where you have every fish in the river eating eggs. And there's a reason why, you know, they're, they're spawning fish. So another, uh, another thing that, that, you know, it's kind of a controversy. I've talked to people a lot um, is the peg egg thing. So if, you, if you're not familiar with this, like taking a, a hard plastic egg, running your, your tippet through that and putting usually a toothpick in and breaking it off and pegging that on your line and then running a bear hook or even a zebra midge um, underneath that so that the fish isn't... Guys started doing that in Alaska so the fish wouldn't swallow the egg and kill them, right? So, but they'd hook them on the outside of the mouth. But I, I hear of guys doing that all the time around here. And it's just like, I, I don't know, is that necessary? Is it ethical? I mean, what, what are the thoughts on that? I haven't personally messed with it enough to know how much it changes uh, the hookup. I know people that do it a lot claim they still hook a lot of them in the mouth. I have to take them at their word and believe that that happens a lot. I'm with you, though. Sometimes, I mean, if you have your hook two, three inches from the, the egg, you're going to get some on the outside of the mouth for sure, yeah. right? Absolutely. Uh, I, I haven't done it enough to know exactly yeah. how that sits personally, but um, it's not something I do. Again, I don't fish eggs that much, but I don't find, you know, locally at least, I don't find that that's a huge advantage versus just fishing right. a regular egg. They'll eat a regular egg just fine. Yeah. And one of the things that I've, I've looked into that is, you know, a lot of these rigs are indicator rigs, right? So mm -hmm. the fish is going to be able to really chomp on that thing before the angler even knows that it's in, in its mouth. So if you're using techniques like Euro nymphing or tight line stuff or whatever, just to actually being attentive and sight fishing with your egg, because a lot of times you can see it, mm -hmm. um, you're going to be able to set the hook as soon as that fish eats it. So, sure. I mean, if you're, if you're just kind of dra dragging along, waiting for that fish to choke down your egg, you're, I mean, maybe choose a different technique as well. Right. Um, so yeah, there's that. I think one other thing that's worth mentioning is, know a little bit about where you're fishing because uh you know like the, ro the river up the road from us is so full of fish that we it probably would benefit the river to have a poor spawn right there because there's too many fish per mile yeah. the division the DW, yeah the division encourages people to keep fish right so with that in mind i still wouldn't suggest going out and targeting the spawners because the spawners are the bigger fish the ones that everybody wants to catch the rest of the year but well, you're, they're easy to catch, Lance. Yeah, I know they are. That's why, we want, that's why we're having this podcast, to try and talk some of you into leaving them alone. But uh, uh, the, the fish that are smaller, that are not uh, mature enough to spawn, you, you, those, are those are plentiful. And just by simple catch, even with catch and release, you know, good technique, you're going to have some fish mortality no matter what. Sure. But the fish that are spawning are stressed from the spawn. They're trying to go through the motions of spawning. The fish that are not mature, not spawning, are usually you know, in a pool downstream waiting for those dislodged eggs to come down or eating midge larva, midge pupa, scud, sow bugs, betas, nymphs, and all that kind of stuff. And those fish are still very, very catchable. And there's no harm in a fishery like that that's overpopulated by fishing during the spawn to the fish that aren't spawning, in my opinion. Yeah. On the flip side, if your home water has 
a very low density of fish, very low numbers of fish, when they're spawning, it's probably in your best interest long term and the fishery's best interest long term to just leave the fishery alone during the spawn, in my opinion. No, I, I, I'm 100% with you. I mean, and as you get better as an angler, I mean, fishing for those fish during the spawn is just like, I used to do it when I was brand new. I think everybody's I think most of us done it, you know, yeah. and, but it gets to the point, it's like, you know what, this, this isn't even really hard. Like this, this is too easy. Like, yeah, it's not as fun. Mm-hmm. Takes away some of the challenge. I have to admit when I go through, scroll through Instagram or Facebook this time of year, and all of a sudden people that haven't been posting fish pictures, all of a sudden have these giant brown trout and they're standing in ankle deep water. And my mind starts going, okay, I guess you're that kind of an angler. You sure. know, so everybody wants to catch a big fish. Can't fault anybody for that. If your only chance at catching a big fish is during the spawn, well, maybe there's a lot to for all of us to learn yet. But uh, you know, that, that, there's there's the hero shots for the gram that well, I'll even are in poor something. taste. I would say this time of year. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's the other thing is like if you are targeting spawning fish and you're taking pictures of that, everybody knows exactly. Everybody knows that you know. You know, half that brown ter- brown's tail is gone because it's cleaning out a red, or it's like really dark colors, or you know, it's not that hard to tell. So I mean, you're it, you're going to hold a big fish, but everybody's going to know all the people exactly you're trying to happens. impress by posting that big fish are. Mm-hmm. It's having the reverse effect. They're looking at you like, look at this clown that only catches fish when they're spawning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One thing I will say as well, like. Let's say that this podcast goes completely in one ear and out the other. It doesn't stick. If there's one thing about fishing the spawn is respect the fish. I mean, if you're going to go pull them off the reds, um, don't drag them across the gravel onto the bank so that you can grab them. Grab them with your wool gloves like this, you know, a 16-inch fish, take a picture, and then put it back in. Um, At the very least, respect those fish. I mean... Nobody wants to see a picture of a mutant, right? Or maybe they do, but but at, at the very least, respect them. I, I see a lot of that, you know. Yeah. I watched one guy pull, I don't know, 10, 15 fish out once a long time ago, and that's what he was doing. He was just dragging them along the rocks. They're flipping all around, grabbed them with his gloves, put them back in. And my first thought is you don't be smelling those gloves but when you get home. <laughs> Or don't put them in the back of a Bronco for three weeks, and then when the when it heats up, you get an even better smell. That sounds like you need to tell a story. Personal experience, (laughs) or is this just a Ford thing? Because you you singled out Broncos. It's a Bronco. Oh yeah, that's what we always do. (laughs) I don't even remember if it was spawn related, but it was uh, wool gloves and fish slime. Fish slime. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Anyway, Mm. but. Regardless, you know, and that's the thing I think like we mentioned, uh, most of us probably, at least when I was in college, I didn't really know what the spawn, the first couple times I went, I didn't know what was going on. All I heard is go to the Provo now and you're going to catch a lot of fish mm-hmm. and here's the flies to use. Right. So I didn't really, I don't think appreciate what was going on. Yeah. And we, we all start in the <clears throat> yeah. same place. Right. And, um, when I went back home to Oregon, it was also during Thanksgiving break, and there was a river there, and uh, I was fishing into some reds, and after a couple fish, they were just super chewed up and didn't fight, but then I realized when I had fished the bigger pools off of those, I was catching really the same size fish, mm-hmm. way healthier, a couple rainbows, um, and... I think that was kind of the turning point for me because there it doesn't take too long for those fish to get beat up right that are on the reds and i don't think anybody really if, if you catch a couple like that it's just not i don't know they're you, you feel sorry for them almost and mm-hmm. you're like well i'd rather catch them in a more sporting way right i mean if you're getting it get down to it you know why why not just take a net and and go scare them, scoop into them right up <laughs> but uh anyways so it's not to say we're We've never done this, but I think it's just an educational progression. Yeah. Same. And that's just the thing is like I, we've all said, yeah, we we fished the spawn back when, when we didn't know any better. Um, but as far as the education goes, you hear about people getting yelled at on the river. Oh, yeah. Fisticuffs. Um, yeah. Like yeah. we have legitimately heard people coming you know, like blows yeah. on the river because somebody deemed them. Yeah. 
too unethical. Know, unethical. Yeah. Right. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. <laughs> so, like, when uh, when someone comes in and they're asking about the spawn uh, on the river, and I'm helping with some flies, and so I'll I'll show them where the eggs are, but. I'm using that time also to, to educate, but not to say, hey, do not fish this time of year or whatever. Yeah. Just say, hey, you're going to see light spots in the river. It's very obvious those are reds. You absolutely need to stay off of those because, you know, that's where all of our fish for the future come from. And everybody's totally cool with it. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I'll fish the deep pools. I'll do this. I'll do that. But, you know, just a little bit of nudging in, in one direction. Um and then you have the guy that comes in that shows you like the, the, the beat up fish. Oh man, you'll never, the German Brown was on this morning. We caught 48 <laughs> before six o'clock and even worth going out there. You live it out, got to go home. <laughs> so nope. yeah, it's, it's just one of those things of, uh, when you're educating, you know, just, just be respectful. I mean, these people are probably going to be fishing for a long time. And a lot of times if someone comes up and just starts yelling at you, telling you you're doing something wrong. It kind of makes that person just want to stick it to you and do it even more. Yeah, so. the natural reaction is yeah. not what you're wanting there, right? The yeah, old honey good. versus vinegar. We've all we all make mistakes. We're all learning fly fishing and the ethics of it as we go. If you can encourage somebody through you know a little bit of sharing and knowledge and, and understanding of what's going on, they're more likely to listen to you than if you just berate them with words, right? So, yeah, yeah. be tactful about it. Weird. Human nature spills into fly fishing. Crazy you know? talk. Yeah. So, uh, we talked a little bit about flies. Um, we talked a little bit about, you know, fishing streamers. Um, jig streamers are also a really good option because a lot of the fish pool in the, in the slow, deep pools. But then also, like, the other day, um, lots of betas and midge activity still going on. And you'll find fish that are still feeding on those. So, you'll still be able to get out there and challenge yourself to catch a, a tougher fish than an egg fish For right sure. during the spawn. But the option two or plan B, if you can't fish during the spawn on a river, what do you do? Hit the lake. You hit the lake. Still water season is phenomenal. Still um, going on. Yeah. So not everything's iced over. Yeah. And people ask probably us all some of the best fishing of the year oh, yeah. <clears throat> in a lot of areas, a lot of fish. People mm -hmm. ask us like, how late can I fish in the year? It's like, you can fish until your fly won't go through the water anymore, <laughs> you know? So I think right there was, I, uh, I can't remember if you were there. It was at Strawberry. We fished, it was December 7th or 8th, and we fished the day before it capped. Oh yeah. And it was phenomenal, hmm. just yeah. phenomenal. So, I mean, there's a really good still water opportunities in most, most of the Western states around. Yeah. There's lots of good options there. Um, can be really aggressive fish. Um, they'll often be shallower. So a lot of good reasons to give that a try as well. Yeah. I think it's funny. I, I went into a shop one time and I was just there kind of fly on the wall. And uh, in regards to that, like a, a guy came in asking for egg patterns and they just, they said, no, we don't sell that stuff here. We don't even sell indicators. You can go somewhere else. You can buy them elsewhere. It's just like, why does it have to be that way? Like a lot of the guys that come into our shop have never fly fished before. And they may have heard about fishing the, the hat mm -hmm. or the, the spawn. spawn. Yeah. Super easy to kind of point them the right direction from, from the get-go. And we sell a lot of eggs. Yeah. I mean, that's, we're not trying to put ourselves on a soapbox or high horse right yeah. two or three indicators every week too yeah <laughs> yeah yeah like so uh yeah, yeah it's just like anything you have to have some uh, kind of guidelines for what you'd recommend and really most of the people that come in they're new um or that you know have heard about the spawn can be good because the fish congregate or whatever um most are pretty open to you know a comment like just be careful where the fish are spawning you don't want to yeah. invade there and and if they don't know what it looks like, we can obviously take some time to show them what it looks like. Um, it's pretty easy. And what I think we, that's a better way to do it. What if we started this? We could like trick people into thinking that there's like the FBI spies that are hiding in the trees on the <laughs> river and they're watching for people that fish yeah. with eggs. And that, that way I'll scare them away too. So, <laughs> But anyway, yeah, we just kind of want to do a, a quick podcast to talk about fishing during the spawn. Yes, you absolutely can do it. You just got to be careful. Yep. 
right? And the other thing is, even though your state might not have you know strict spawning regulations um, or I, I don't know what whatever you want to whatever you want to call it, you you have your own set of ethics that should be you know how you act regardless of where you fish. And well, and I, I think a good example of that we fish still water a lot, so in the spring you have rainbows and cutthroats that spawn. And so we know a lot of lakes that have a strong uh, congregation of rainbows, let's say, mm -hmm. that'll come in close and you can see them all and they're gonna be getting banged up spawning and um, a lot easier to catch. And the difference between catching those fish and the fish that are out a little bit further or in different kind of feeding patterns is night and day. Like oh, yeah. I wouldn't, you know, from our experience, just the the actual enjoyment and quality of the fish it, is just a whole nother level when you're not actively working to these poor fish that are spawning. Right. Because you're kind of like waiting for one of them, one of the 30 of them that are spawning. They're yeah. schooling He's around gonna and get pissed off. going to break ranks. And, yeah. yeah. And, and it's uh, it's kind of an enjoyment thing. I don't, I mean, yeah. it's not, to me, it's not just an ethical thing. It's just like, I, yeah. you know, which would you prefer? This dark, gnarly looking thing that doesn't fight very well or a super hot, silver, big, strong fish. And it's literally a distance of 40 feet or something, right. you know, I mean, something like that. Yeah. Most anglers that are relatively accomplished have been doing it for a while are looking for a mix of, you know, success mixed with challenge. And yeah. if the challenge part goes away, it's not so fun. And if there's no success, it's not so fun. Yeah. And somewhere so in the is, middle yeah, of those, it's a balance. Yeah. yeah somewhere in the sure. middle of those is, is where that balance is struck for yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah. So the end of the day, just uh, learn what the reds look like. Find other spots on the river that you can fish if you can. If your river is, you know, too, not very many fish and not very, very many opportunities to fish for non-spawners, you should find somewhere else. And just because you're fishing a pink hairs here doesn't mean you're not fishing an egg. Just saying. <laughs> there I said it. People are going to cry themselves to sleep. Did you just let a secret out? The pink okay. hairs here? <laughs> no, the secret was that orange sow bug that we have downstairs. Oh, boy. With the tungsten bead. Deadly. I know the guy who made that fly. Deadly? Yeah, it's deadly. <laughs> anyway, that's There you kind have of, it. Yeah. Comment. There you have it. Email us, whatever. If you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below with what you think. If you're listening to us on Spotify, just give a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, give us a thumb. Give us a thumb. Yeah, you're probably in your car. I want you to roll down your window right now, stick your hand out, and give us a thumbs up. But we're doing more podcasts, so stay tuned. Yeah. Hit us up if you have any interesting topics you'd like covered. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's what we need is like give us give us some topics because we've got this studio. We, we're going to use it, man. Yeah, it doesn't have to be all about just techniques. Like we can tell funny stories. We can uh, we can bring Brig back and talk about cougars and badgers dude, and bigfoot yeah. i'm just glad i those podcasts with brigham like they i use too much energy because i've <laughs> i've got it like i like lance better because i can just sit and chill i don't have to monitor what's coming from mic three with brigham it's a challenge i'm gonna have That's to sit here saying. at the control panel and yeah no doubt beep I didn't watch those yet. Is there animal sounds or what? Are oh, those? there's Dude, everything. You have animal to watch sounds, them. bites, incredulous stories. Hmm. Oh, if yeah. you have, if you're listening to this and you haven't listened to the Wild Animal podcast, you need to check it out. Yep, it's a good one. <laughs> Brigham's one of a kind. I mean, half of a kind. <laughs> With that, we will leave you to the next episode. <laughs>